these are, we're talking today about the algebra of functions. And really, um, we've done functions before, but today it's all about learning notation. So these first four examples, first four bullets at the top, really are nothing for you to do other than learn notation. When you see f plus g of x, it means add the two functions, add f of x plus g of x. When you see this notation, f minus g of x, it means do, it means subtract function g from function f. When you see f times g of x, it means multiply f of x and g of x. And on this one, when you divide, f divided by g of x means this. So it's just about learning new notation, f of x divided by g of x. And then remember that when you have a fraction, zero in the bottom of the fraction makes it undefined. So remember we talked about restrictions a lot this year. And so on this problem, the first thing we've got to do is because we have restrictions, we've got to review finding the domain. This is all reviewed. We've done this before. If I ask you to find the domain and write it in interval notation, the domain has to do with the fact that I could plug 100 into this. I could plug 20 into this. I could plug negative 50 in for x. I could plug 427 million in for x. It's impossible to list everything that I can put in. So when we talk about the domain, we talk about what can we not input into this function. You can tell me, what can I not put in to this function? Negative 5. Negative 5. Why? Because if we put in negative 5, it makes the denominator equal 0. So that's a restriction. So on the domain, we could talk about it this way, the set of all x's such that x cannot equal negative 5. That's one way to talk about the domain, but I've asked you to give it to me in interval notation, and sometimes a picture helps you do that. x can be any number on the entire x-axis except for one place. x cannot be negative 5. So when we do interval notation and talk about what x can be, remember how we do this? We talk about from left to right. x can be anything from negative infinity up to negative 5. We don't include negative 5. We hop over it. We join it with the piece that goes from negative 5 to positive infinity. Are you okay? Join with. Where do you look on the x-axis? It's union is actually what it's called, but we, it's, it's, you can look here and here, those two pieces, to find values of x that are okay to drop into this function, <coughs> okay to use as input. On the next one, it is not quite as easy to look at that and immediately see what values of x cause the denominator to equal zero. This is the question you're really trying to answer on this one. You are trying to decide when is x squared plus x minus 12 going to turn into 0? How do I answer that question? I'm solving a quadratic equation. We learned five ways to solve them. What's the first one that comes to mind? <coughs> factor. Who thought of factor easily? How does it factor? What multiplies to be negative 12 and adds to be 1? So it'll factor as x plus 4 times x minus 3. What are the solutions? x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. So here's, what we, here's our conclusion. These values of x, these x values, cause the denominator <coughs> to equal 0. So they are restrictions. <coughs> so if I talk about the domain for this one, one way of talking about it is to say the domain is the set of all x's such that x cannot be negative 4 and x cannot be 3. But if we do that in interval notation, a picture might help. 
Where can you look on the x-axis anywhere except two places? X can't be negative 4 and X can't be positive 3 because those are the two numbers that make the denominator turn into 0. So do you remember how to describe this with interval notation? You always do interval notation coming from left to right. So from negative infinity up to negative 4, don't include negative 4, but then you've got to join that with union a little piece from negative 4 to 3, and then join that with a little piece from 3 to infinity. Are you okay? On this denominator. The thing that would cause us a problem is taking the square root of a negative number. Because the square root of a negative number, square root of negative 4. It's imaginary, right? 2i. We don't want imaginary numbers. So, here's the deal. We want to avoid <coughs> taking the square root of a negative number. So whatever is underneath the radical needs to be positive. Where do you find positive numbers? Bigger than zero? X minus three has to be greater than zero. So if you solve this inequality, and add 3 to both sides. X has to be a number that's bigger than 3. Plug in something that's not bigger than 3, like say 0. 0 minus 3 means you're taking the square root of negative 3. But if you plug in something that, <coughs> what if I plug in exactly 3, is that okay? 3 yeah. minus 3 means you're taking the square root of 0, and the answer is 0, and then the fraction's undefined. So can't X can't be exactly 3, it has to be something bigger. Like 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. And the square root of 1 is just 1. And that's okay. So the domain for this one could be described this way. The set of all x's such that x is bigger than 3. And if you draw a picture of that, here's what it looks like. Start at 3. Don't include 3. Remember how we use it? Now we've kind of graduated from an open circle to don't include 3, but do include everything bigger. So how do you describe this with interval notation? From left to right. Y'all here today? Mm -hmm. Start at 3, don't include 3. Go all the way to infinity. The first few problems on your homework ask you to find the domain. You've done it before. This part's review. Okay. Go down to the next part. These are examples where we're practicing <coughs> operations on functions, like adding functions, subtracting functions multiplying functions, dividing functions. So you have two pieces of information given to you. f of x equals 3x minus 5, and g of x equals 3x squared plus 13x minus 30. When, huh? g is the name of the function. Like it's just like f of x, I guess? Yeah, yeah. It's just a different, it's just a way to distinguish between the two functions. Okay. We can name one f and one g and one h of x and one k of x, and so it's just different functions. So this is saying we're going to add two functions. This notation, f plus g of x, means do f of x plus g of x. So that means we're going to add 3x minus 5 and... 3x squared plus 13x minus 30. 
there's not a whole lot to do with this other than combine things that are alike. So 3x squared, 3x and 13x plus 16x. We could combine negative 5 and negative 30 to get negative 35. So f plus g of x equals this. That's the best you can do with it. How's number two different from number one? Other than we're subtracting, but what else do you notice that's different? Yeah, it has a number, not a variable. So the difference on this one is going to be um, really the notation means g of 4 minus f of 4. g of 4 means go to rule g and input a 4 everywhere you see an x. So if you find g of 4, that means you're going to go to this rule and do 3 times 4 squared plus 13 times 4 minus 30. Is it okay, true or false, if I do 3 times 4 first and get 12 and then square it? That is not okay. Order of operations. You've got to take care of the exponent first. So the first thing we got to do is 4 squared. That's 16. So 3 times 16 is 48. 13 times 4 is 52. Then minus 30. We're just adding and subtracting. So go from left to right. 100 minus 30. We get 70. So g of 4 is 70 minus. Now we've got to find f of 4. If we find f of 4, then we will go up to that rule. And everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with a 4. So 3 times 4 minus 5, or 12 minus 5, or 7. So 70 minus 7 gives us 63. What is it that is 63? G minus f of 4 equals 63. Work on using correct notation. On number three, this notation means f times g. So f <coughs> of negative two times g of negative two. Again, this time, you don't have an x, you have a number. So you can expect that your answer is going to be a number instead of an expression that has variables in it. So find f of negative 2 first. That will mean every time you see an x in the f function, you're going to replace it with a negative 2. So f of negative 2 equals 3 times negative 2 minus 5. Or that's negative 6 minus 5. Or negative 11. So that means you're going to multiply negative 11 times something. So now you have to go find what is g of negative 2. Everywhere you see an x, you've got to replace it with a negative 2. So g of negative 2 will give us 3 times negative 2 squared plus 13 times negative 2 minus 30. We've got to do order of operations, exponents first. Negative 2 times negative 2, that's positive 4. So we'll have 12. 13 times 2, 13 times negative 2, negative 26, minus 30. 12 minus 26, we got negative 14, minus 30. So negative 44. That means do negative 11 times negative 44. Did you get 484? Mm -hmm. So what you found is f times g of negative 2. On number 4, we're dividing. Is everybody okay? Can you erase some of this? This one, this notation means f of x divided by g of x.
the whole function f, 3x minus 5, divided by the entire function g, 3x squared plus 13x minus 30. It's always a little tempting. We've talked about this. Would it be okay to cancel those threes? Not okay. Those are terms. We don't cancel terms. We only cancel factors. There's not a whole lot I can do with this unless there's something that would reduce. If I want to decide if it's going to reduce, I've got to see if it factors. On top, about the best I can do is call that 1 times 3x minus 5. How about the denominator? Will it factor? Let's work on it for a minute. So, 3x squared plus 13x minus 30. If I'm going to try to factor it, I'm going to play this game. I have to find numbers that multiply to be negative 90 and add to be 13. Anybody have it? Negative 18 times 5. We use those two numbers. Remember how this works? It's been a while, but we've done this a bunch. Split the middle. So instead of 13x, we're going to replace it. 3x squared minus 18x plus 5x minus 30. Now group. If we group these two, we can take out a 3x, and that leaves x minus 6. And if we group these two, we can factor out a 5, and that is also x minus 6. Ms. Charles, I think it should be negative 5 and positive 18. Oh, we need it to be a positive, no, we need it to be a positive 13, you're right. Positive 18 and negative 5. Thank you for fixing that. Positive 18, negative 5. So that'll make this x plus 6, and then we need to factor out a negative 5, and that'll make this x plus 6, because a negative 5 times a positive 6 gives a negative 30. So then it's going to factor, because x plus 6 is common. So if we factor out x plus 6, that leaves us 3x minus 5. So rewrite this in its factored form. 1 times 3x minus 5 over x plus 6 times 3x minus 5. Now I can reduce it. I can cancel factors. There's one more thing I have to consider. The answer is just 1 over x plus 6. So f divided by g of x equals 1 over x plus 6, but there are restrictions. Do you all remember that we list restrictions before we cancel? So what can x not be? x cannot be negative 6, or on this one, you've got to ask yourself, when is 3x minus 5 going to turn into 0? You've got to add 5 to both sides. 3x equals 5, so x equals 5 thirds. Five thirds will make the denominator turn into zero, so it's a restriction. X cannot equal five thirds. So we practice adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. Turn over to the next page. On the next page, you see a graph. on the same rectangular coordinate plane. One of them is named f of x and the other one is named g of x. Mark them. Let's see. The thick line is f of x, so label it. The thick line is f of x and the thin line is g of x. find f of negative 7. We've talked about this notation before. 
It means x sub negative 7 is the input. Negative 7 is the x value. This notation means when x equals negative 7, what's the function value? What's the y value? So go out to the x-axis. Go out to negative 7 on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, you got to run until you hit a graph. Which one are we going to hit? Yeah, because we're going, we're looking for the f, the f function value of negative 7. And the f function is the thick line. So I've got to run up until I hit the thick line. 1, 2, 3, 4. The y value is 4. So f of negative 7 equals 4. On number 6, this notation means when x equals 3, what's y? Or in this, what's the function value? What's the g value? So if you go out to 1, 2, 3, and you run until you hit the g function, which is the thin line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, g of 3 equals negative 6. On number 7, you're given this notation. F plus G of 3. So you have to understand the notation. It means do F of 3 plus G of 3. We've already done G of 3. We know this is going to be negative 6. What about F of 3? If you go out on the x-axis, until you're at 3, and run until you hit the F function. That's the thick line. And if you go right to the middle of the thick line, you're not really, um, I, I would call it 1 half or 0.5. So 0.5 plus negative 6, negative 5.5. Work on number 8. Number 8 asks you to do f times g of 5. So that notation means, it's just a matter of understanding the notation, do f of 5 times g of 5. So if you go out on the x-axis until you're at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the F function is the thick function. So if I run until I hit the thick graph, where do I land? Y'all help me. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Negative 2. If I'm out on 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I run until I hit the thin graph, I don't have to run very far. What is it? I'm there, right? Zero. So negative 2 times 0 is 0. F of G, F times G of 5 equals 0. On number 9, you're asked to do G divided by F of 0. This notation means do G of 0 and divide it by f of 0. So g is the skinny graph. It says, go out on the x-axis until you're on 0. OK, 0 on the x-axis. And then you're on the skinny graph. So g of 0 is 0. What is f of 0? From zero, run until you hit the the thick graph. Negative three. What's the answer to this? Zero divided by negative three. Say again. Zero. Yeah, zero. If the zero's on top, the answer is zero. Did you notice on number ten? You're asked to just do. You got it. You're asked to do f of zero divided by g of zero, which is going to flip flop these and put the zero on the bottom of the fraction, and in that case, it is undefined. <coughs>
do the last one. Number 11 asks you to do F plus G of 5. That notation just means do F of 5 and add it to G of 5. What's F of 5? Out on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Run until you hit the F graph. That's the thick one. So maybe negative 2. <coughs> Plus, what's G of 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x-axis. The skinny graph, negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. So F plus G of 5 is negative 2. Questions, you okay? Ashley, we stop that.